These signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands in the sick, and they shall recover. And so what do these people say? That shouldn't be there. Who would think that it shouldn't be there? Who wouldn't want it there? I think we can see where that came from. And so he's saying here, talking about the glory of the man, the glory of the woman, and so forth. He says in verse 8, For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. Again, just setting things in proper sequence. So you know this, this movement of women's liberation. Women have never wanted to be equal. I'm talking about worldly women. They never wanted to be equal. They wanted to be superior. They talk about equal rights, equal rights, equal rights. But they don't want equal rights. They want to run the show. Hmm. Do you think the devil might be behind that one? Let's hold our page for a minute. I wasn't going to do this, but it just popped into my mind, so we better. Let's go back to Isaiah for just a minute. Way back there, to the prophet Isaiah, at the very beginning of the book. Let's see if I can find this for you very quickly. It's kind of amazing how the Lord foresaw so many, he, well he knows all things, but how he he, through his prophets, was able to foresee all the things that would ever happen. The uh, conditions that would exist right at this very time. If you go to chapter 3 for just a moment. It says in verse 4, and I will give children to be their princes and babes shall rule over them and the people shall be oppressed every one by another they're going to they're going to oppress each other and every one by his neighbor the child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient do you have a bunch of cocky young people mocking the elderly and the base against the honorable. And this whole, as you read on, it describes the whole situation. And let's see here. Verse 12 says, As for my people, children are their oppressors. You have children oppressing the older people. And women rule over them. O my people, they which lead thee, cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. That's what happens when children oppress and women lead. Boy, I'm going to get letters on this one. It's just out of order. You know how many female Congress members we ought to have? Absolutely none. And God knew what he was doing. I don't know if you realize this yet. Maybe I'm telling you something new here. But women are different from men. Hmm? Did you ever notice that? Anybody? <laughs> women have some qualities that men don't have. They're meticulous. I mean, they can knit all day long. Nothing wrong with that. It drives me crazy. They have a certain amount of patience. In most cases, they have a higher pain threshold. Uh, they have a lot of very amazing qualities that men generally don't have. But one thing about women is, let's give me an example here. Okay, a man and a woman are watching television, right? Which is a stupid thing to do because it's a waste of time. But anyway... Got a man and a woman watching television, and 
one of these commercials comes on for these starving children. And they show all these pictures, these bloated bellies, these sad looks, and oh, you know. And you know the guys putting this on are going to skim a big bunch of this off the top and shove it in their pockets. Now the women are going to see, and I'm generalizing, but it's, it's a fact, because they have a different kind of emotions than men do. God made it that way. They see these little children, and it tugs at their heart, and oh, they get the checkbook out right away. And the man says, now wait a minute here. Wait a minute, I want to know more about this. That isn't going to get to me. Sure, there's a problem. But I want to make sure that this gets to them. See, the women hit, get hit with the emotions quicker, in most cases. There are always some exceptions, but generally that is the truth. Men and women are different. God made it that way. And they have to work together in proper sequence, and proper order, and everything is well. Now, just a little something to think about there. Okay? So we read on, because he's dealing with a very important issue here. We're going to go back to uh, 1 Corinthians 11 now. So you go to verse 9, which we read. It's, it says, Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. For this cause ought the woman to have power on her head because of the angels. What kind of power could a woman have on her head that would affect the angels? It's very simple. God has given her a glory, a veil, a natural veil that grows out of her scalp and is supposed to be kept long. And if you think you're offended, and I'm going to tell you, there is not much uglier than a bald-headed woman or one that's got just a little fuzz sticking out of her scalp. Or the, some of these styles where it's just a tiny little, you know, cut to the quick, you know, there's a little one inch of hair all the way around or something. There's not much uglier than that, I'm telling you. I don't think I'm the only one who thinks so. And if that bothers you, understand that it bothers the angels. The angels of God who come and to be with us, and they're with us tonight. Amen. If you've got a church full of women, and most churches have mostly, we got mostly men in here. It's very rare. Most churches have about 20% men and 80% women. That's just the way it is. And if you've got a church full of women with chopped off hair, cut short, and, and come in dressed in these suits and so forth, you can't tell what you got. That offends the angels. Because they see that they're out of order. You don't want to do any angel offending. Okay? For this cause ought the woman to have power, power, power on her head. That isn't a little rag they wear up there, it's their hair. Because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither the woman without the man in the Lord. That when they're joined together, they are one. You see that? The power is one. And God works through them both. That's right. For as the woman is of the man, even so is the man also by the woman, but all things of God. Judge in yourselves. Is it comely that a woman pray unto God uncovered? Does it look right if she's got her hair all chopped off and frizzed out? And generally when they do that, they come strutting in and, you know, it affects their whole attitude. They don't, they're not feminine anymore. 